All right, so many of you requested and I ran a poll that I go and get another 16 inch MacBook Pro. This is the new 16 inch MacBook Pro 2021, the notch edition with the M1 Pro chip. Now, one of these is the Pro chip and the other one is the Max chip. Which one is which? I actually just swapped them out and I um, left them outside to cool for a little bit. So I don't remember which one is which. And when I run this test today, I'm gonna do it blind. I'm not gonna see which machine is which. And then hopefully the test results will reveal to me which one is which, and then we'll check at the end. So let's pop these things open and take a look. All right, so I've got both these machines open now, and they look <laughs> pretty close to identical, except for the slight temperature variation, which uh, I'm not sure why that's happening, but the one on the left is 41 degrees, and the one on the right is 46 degrees. Other than that, they look pretty much the same. So what are we doing today? We're doing the Android benchmark. Uh, let's uh, open that up and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. And you've seen me do this on this channel before, but maybe some of you are not familiar. And a uh, gentleman by the name of Sergei Rathivsky, he created this as a fork of Mozilla Mobile, which is basically Firefox for Android. So it's a snapshot of that repository in time so that people can run this and report their results for this benchmark using different machines and uh, he compiled the results here. So you can go to the repo, check out the results of other people and their tests, there's a Google sheet there. But this also tells you how to run the project, what are the requirements, and I've set all this up. I've also uh, posted a video how I set up Android Studio from scratch on an Apple Silicon machine, which is not exactly straightforward. Anyway, let's uh, get beyond all that and we're gonna go and pop open Android Studio on both of these machines. And there we go. I have Android Studio Benchmark on both of these. Let's open that up. Now, by the way, you don't need to open Android Studio to run this. You can just run this from the command line from the terminal. But uh, I wanted to have Android Studio open as well because, well, that's how typically we use Android Studio. Not through the command line, but most of the time we use it with the Android Studio open. People that build cross-platform apps don't have to do that. The CLIs usually handle that for you, so you don't have to. But uh, we're going to today. So. Here we are at the terminal down at the bottom, and I think I might have given this away already, at least to myself. I can tell the difference between those two terminals because I know what I called the machines. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> oh, well. Everything else is pretty much equal. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this. For those of you that can figure out, good for you. For those of you that can't, maybe you'll be surprised at the end. Heck, maybe we'll all be surprised at the end. So to run this, uh, you use the command Gradle W clean assemble debug. All right, we are ready to go. And I'm gonna hit enter at the same time because this time we don't have any dependencies to download. So why not? Let's make it a race. Those are always fun. And ready? Let's go. Okay, the one on the right seems to be faster already, at least at that part. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, uh, the machine on the right seems to be leading because this one is not even moving. Maybe it's doing something, I don't know. But this one, well, I can't really tell, to be honest with you, by the output of this uh, build. So we'll be right back after this is done. We'll review the results. Oh, and just in case you're wondering, the specs for these machines will be in the description, but they are both 10 core CPUs. Okay, we have <laughs> a winner, but not by much. The machine on the left actually has 1 minute 48 seconds and the machine on the right 1 minute 53 seconds. So we're not gonna go by just one number. We want to know the average, so I'm gonna do this a couple more times, and let's go. If we get consistent results where the machine on the left is constantly winning, I'm gonna go ahead and say the machine on the left is the M1 Max. And just a little review of the current temperature situation, this is 63 degrees right now, this one is at 54. Let's take a look at the battery here on both of these machines. Oh, battery is at 100. Okay, so they're both exactly the same right now. We've kicked things off. They were fully charged at 100%. So let's see how the battery gets affected after a few builds. Okay, this one is done at 125. This one is still working at it. Wow, 152. Pretty consistent with the machine on the right, but this one just uh, <laughs> took off. And again, this battery is really holding strong, isn't it? They're both grabbing onto that 100% battery power. I think that after this test, I'm gonna run one more test and then I'm gonna play, I don't know, some videos to see which one of these will be first to 99% battery. That's not a long-term use scenario, of course, so don't judge a battery by the first percent lost. 
uh, but that's gonna be for a separate test. The battery test will have to be probably a separate video. Let me know if you wanna see that. And uh, if you do wanna see that, let me know what programs uh, you want to see drain the battery. Now, as far as the temperature of the CPUs, they're hovering around the same area, around about 60 degrees, 58 to 61. So I don't think one is heating up more than the other one. So I'm not really getting an indication of, uh, let's say a really powerful, hot GPU or a CPU. Well, a GPU is not really being used here, but the CPU, right? However, since they're both 10 cores, maybe we won't see any difference. And here we go, look at this. Now we've got 123 on the machine on the left and we got 125 on the machine on the right. I don't know, I don't know. I think we need to run this again. Ho <laughs> ho that was so close that as soon as I looked away from one, the other one was done. Folks, uh, I don't know if this is making much of a difference right now. Let me just write all this down. I mean, clearly the one on the left is winning consistently, but but the margin is getting smaller and smaller each iteration of my runs here. So if I had to guess, I'd say the one on the left is the M1 Max. Now what does cause a huge difference in build time is which JDK version you're using. Are you using an Intel version, which has to get translated through Rosetta, or are you using an ARM dedicated version which doesn't have to be translated. And I made a video on that right over here. So check that out. Now let's check the machines to see what they actually are. The one on the left here, the one that consistently won is in fact an M1 Max chip. And the one on the right, obviously, is the M1 Pro chip. So the average build time on the M1 Max was one minute, 23 seconds. And the average build time on this one, on the M1 Pro, is one minute, 34 seconds. So a difference of about 11 seconds on average. And if you're doing this a lot, it might add up, but it might not even be worth the extra thousand bucks that I paid for this machine. Now here, I've also got that 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip that I was talking about and my uh, good old trusty M1 Air. <laughs> this machine has really been kicking some butt, the M1 Air. If you wanna see this exact test uh, racing these two machines, then I'll leave a comment down below as well. Now that we've got some preliminary numbers on this, let's see how the battery was affected on these two machines. Well, we're still at 100% on each one of these. All right, so what I'm gonna do is um, something unconventional <laughs> and something you probably wouldn't do, but this is something us programmers would do. I don't know. If you have a problem and you want a solution, you program it, right? So how do we execute this a number of times over and over and over again until the battery drains a little bit and then we can check it in a little while? Um, well, use a loop, right? So here I've typed up a little shell script right on the shell here for I in sequence two, do that command that we were executing and then done. Let's change that number to something a little higher so it takes about a minute and a third to execute one of these. Let's do 30 iterations. And that will give me time to go walk my dog. And then I'll be back to check on the battery status here. Okay, I've got that command set up on both of these. Let's go. Axel, you wanna go for a walk? Come on, come on. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You wanna go for a walk, don't you? Oh yeah, what a good dog, yeah. Smile for the camera. <laughs> okay, this thing just finished. I'm back from the walk, it was cold outside. The, the times that we're getting up pretty consistent at this point. One minute, 21 seconds, one minute, 24 seconds. Let's check the battery. 79%, 80%. So the max is using just a little bit more energy, it looks like, and that's to be expected. So that's just a little battery test. Let me know down in the comments below if you wanna see a more extensive battery test where we go all the way and kill the machines and I can include my Intel machine as well as the MacBook Air and the other M1 Pro that has eight cores. So what's the takeaway here? The Max is a little bit faster than the Pro if you're gonna be doing these kinds of uh, large builds. Now, I did do a large Xcode build and I did that using the M1 Max 16 inch versus the M1 Pro 14 inch. So there's a little bit of a difference in size there. And the previous Pro that I used for this was eight core machine, not a 10 core machine. So I saw a significant difference there, but this difference is not significant at all. And that's probably because there's 10 cores here and 10 cores there. So we're very close. What's accounting for the difference? Most likely it's the bandwidth of the memory. The M1 Max has a lot more memory bandwidth than the M1 Pro. And that could result in these kinds of uh, differences in a few seconds uh, of build time. If you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already, make that button gray, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.